when local growers put great food on Tennessee tables. That's Living Green. Tonight on Live Green Tennessee, we visit Hancock County, where a local farm is utilizing multi-species grazing. Then we'll head to East Tennessee, where the Cruz Dairy Farm is using organic grazing to produce sweet, cold ice cream. Finally, we'll head to Cookville to check out the Live Green 5K. All this and more on Live Green Tennessee, coming up next. This program is brought to you in part by... Behind every Pick Tennessee Products logo is a Tennessee farmer who brings you fresh, local food grown with the kind of pride that gets handed down through generations. From now through fall, you can find Tennessee fruits and vegetables on farms and at farmers markets near you. Find your Tennessee farmers at picktnproducts.org. What makes our state unique? Find out on the new Tennessee Channel, a statewide initiative by your public television stations. Each program is created in Tennessee, about Tennessee, and broadcast in Tennessee. The Tennessee Channel, Saturdays, 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 2 to 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on your public television station. Funding for this program was provided in part by the United States Department of Agriculture. <laughs> Connecting the grower to the buyer, the country to the city, and smart shopping with a healthy lifestyle. It's Live Green Tennessee. Hello, I'm Melinda Kiefer and I'm proud to bring you stories from across our great state on Live Green Tennessee. When most people think of grazing, they imagine the job getting done by one single species. But Greg Bruin of Hancock County is proving that green grazing can be done using multiple species. He uses lambs, cows, dogs, llamas, and other animals to graze the land. WCTE's Desiree Duncan shows us how this Tennessee farmer utilizes a grazing strategy that not only brings a consistent profit it, but improves the environment as well. I'm a holistic manager and that means that I'm working with nature and uh, I'll give you my holistic goal for the operation is, is, uh, is a low stress, low cost grazing operation that improves the environment and production and is consistently profitable. So. And with that in mind, it helps with uh, management decisions and what to spend money on and how, how to reach that vision of a goal. It's lower cost if the animals are grazing. It's two to five times, can even be much cheaper if you're feeding uh, concentrated uh, feeds, uh, bought feed. But uh, it's much cheaper and it's also environmentally friendly when the animals deposit their manure and defecate out on the land instead of in a barn where you have to manage it and get it back on the barn, out from the barn to the field. And we want it away from sensitive areas, water areas and uh, sinkholes and things like that um, because that could impact pear water quality and it's not a benefit for the land. So our whole thing is managing for cover and the more cover we have, the more sunlight we capture, uh, the more grass we grow, and then it's a, it's a real cycle. And the energy is not a cycle, it's a flow, and we want to capture that energy. If we don't, if it hits bare ground, then it's lost as heat. So we've missed that energy. So it's important for us to keep a solar panel, which is the grass, and then the water cycle is, uh, there's only so much water in the world, but we've got a lot of control of where that water is. And the cover slows down evaporation and, and then slows runoff and gets more infiltration. So we actually have less droughts, less floods. And uh, so it, again, we, we're working with the, uh, all these different uh, cycles and flows. And then the mineral cycle would be like the manure cycling back to the land and going into the, the plants and all. So that's how we try to manage it as a system. I personally uh, like plant diversity and animal diversity too. 
and they all graze a little different or browse different on this place and on the other place too. We even have more diversity, but uh, is um, we have sheep, predominantly sheep and cattle and goats. And the goats are browsers and they eat things like the briars and multiflora rose. And what's cool about that is they're eating a whole nother plant that hadn't been part of the mineral cycle. So whenever they eat that, they're pulling, it's the same as pulling nutrients from deep in the ground because of the deep rooting. And then they've eaten it and they bring it back to the surface to recycle again. The guardians, I've got four dogs here, I've got llamas, and then I've got six donkeys here. Uh, the llamas I have are you know, questionable how good a guardians they are, but some of them are work very well. Um, and then the donkeys, we've seen them doing some good work. Like uh, one of the lambs was left behind and some donkeys stayed with that lamb until the mothers came back. So that's a good thing. You can run one to two goats uh, for every cow without impairing the grazing of the cattle. Um, and actually you'll improve the grazing for the, for the cattle. Now the sheep, they're more of a competitor with, with the cattle because they're more similar uh, grazing to, to the cattle. Now the sheep, they do graze more forbs, uh, more uh, vegetative weeds, you know, uh, so, so they fit in real well in that. And also they're the most profitable right now as far as I'm concerned. So we're focusing more on sheep and I, I enjoy working with them. This area here is fairly steep. It's uh, probably 20 to 30 percent slope. Pretty good soil, pretty good production and all. Uh, we do a different technique here. We, we strip mow here and you can see that off in the distance there. And the reason for that is the sheep and goats don't like to go off into deep forage. So it was to attract them to that land up there that had quite a bit of forage on it, but they weren't going in it. So we did this strip mowing about uh, probably 20 feet wide and about 50 feet wide, something like that. And we did that on some hills and they've just mowed some more because we're fixing to rotate out of this field into the another field. So. Uh, just around here, there's there's some more strip mowing, and it kind of looks like strip crop does up in Pennsylvania in the Amish country, but uh, this is all just grass. Yeah, like to move every three days, that or less is ideal to move the animals to a new pasture. Um, uh, it's okay once a week, it works, you know, you kind of have to work with the land mass you have. Uh, like these fields here, they're so steep it's hard to cross fence with poly wire. Uh, so we, we tend to work with the land mass and we're on about a weekly rotation on this, this farm here. But cer certain fields are bigger and we'll, we'll leave them longer. Um, but you'll get more growth potential and less parasites and all if you can move quicker. And uh, so that's our target is every three days. And then we do that on the other farm pretty much. There's a corral that was existing in the barn and that's very nice. Uh, so that worked out very well. And, and actually I'll say a little bit about the layout here. We, we have an area down here that I call the hub of the farm and we always move the animals through that hub or little, little area. And so they, they're easy to get up to work through the corral because they, they feel like they're going to a new paddock or pasture. And so, uh, and they will do that after we work them through the corral, we'll turn them out to a new pasture. So they, they easily, very easy to move and get up. And it's important to have that kind of flow in, in the farm so that it is easy and sustainable. Located on the French Broad River, the Cruz Dairy Farms hormone-free Jersey cows spend their days on pastures free from herbicides and pesticides. After graduating from college, daughter Colleen Cruz recently revived the farm's production of Cruz Farm Girl ice cream, made with a base of cream, milk, sugar, egg yolks, and salt. This summertime treat has been a big hit at area farmers markets and organic grocers. East Tennessee PBS's Chris Smith shows us how this dairy farm is not only using organic grazing, but passing the craft down to the next generation.
Yeah, I'm Merle Cruz, and uh, I started farming uh, for myself some hots when I was 21. I grew up on a farm before that, of course, but uh, when I turned 21, I bought 100 acres and uh, of, uh, a little bit on the rough side land and uh, started trying to grow a few cattle. We've expanded to uh, 500 acres here and, and improved the quality of our land a little bit. Right now we're probably 150 head of Jersey cattle for uh, producing the dairy products. I'm trying to get back to uh, the old way of farming as much as possible, open pollinated corn and organic grass to feed my cattle. On the farm, we believe natural's best. Everything that we produce here, we consume ourselves. We want to produce the highest quality of products. We don't, we don't spray our, our pastures with pesticides and we don't use hormones for our cows because we consume the products and we don't want to consume those things. And I think that's what's most important when you're looking for a product to consume yourself is find out where the source is and who is the source. And if they really care about these sorts of things, then I think you can trust them. The first product we ever made at the farm was our cream line milk, which is our whole milk that's been pasteurized. Pasteurized means heated and not homogenized, so the cream rises to the top. And that's how milk used to always look like with cream on top and now it's a little bit more uh, rare to find cream top milk in the store. We also have light milk which is also cream top but half the fat, chocolate milk which is ridiculously good, and my favorite drink which is buttermilk and that's my dad's doing. He makes the best churned buttermilk. I grew up here at the dairy farm but I spent a lot of my childhood at the farmers market eating ice cream. My parents made, made homemade ice cream. And so a couple years ago in college, I decided I wanted to make homemade ice cream like my parents. We still have the equipment and it still runs great. And so I've started making Cruz Farm Girl ice cream like my parents used to make. It's simple five ingredients is our base for ice cream, which is cream, milk, sugar, egg yolks. We get really beautiful, bright orange egg yolks from local farms like Jim Farm, Tiki Boo Farm, and also we um, put a little salt in there. So it's five ingredients to start with. We make like a custard base for our ice cream, uh, which is composed of those five ingredients. And we heat it, cool it, and then we have an ice cream base. And then we can make anything we want. So like right now, strawberries are in season. We're making strawberry buttermilk ice cream. Buttermilk is a really great ingredient for ice cream because it gives a little extra tang and it's a little bit lighter and on fat, which makes it more like a frozen yogurt. So that's one of our favorite flavors is buttermilk ice cream. Make strawberry buttermilk, buttermilk lime cardamom, buttermilk lemon custard, and let's see, pretty soon we'll be making blackberry ice cream, which is one of our most popular flavors. The response to our ice cream has been really great. Uh, we think it's just a really pure, clean product, and people have responded well to that. We don't use any stabilizers, like, like guar gum, xanthan gum, which maybe, maybe they're fine for you, but we choose not to use those, and we just want to have a really simple homemade tasting product, and people really love that. I don't really know what the future of Cruz Farm is. I just take it a day at a time. That's kind of how <laughs> we do it here. We just try to get through you know, a day's worth of work and then see what tomorrow holds. But my mom said a while back that our little slogan for the farm should be a farm forever because my parents do hope that this farm continues. And I have two siblings and I hope that one day they both want to jump in here and keep this farm going. For right now, we're running the farm with some help from family and also from a Japanese internship program called JATP, which stands for Japanese Agriculture Training Program. And this past year, since I've been out of college, I've been working full time. And I've had a girl named Ayaka Nishijima who's been right along beside me working extremely long hours, sometimes up to 18 hours a day. We're out here at the dairy to get things, you know, working to get things done. I'm Ayaka and I'm from Japan. I work on Cruise Dairy Farm for a year, which is great experience for me because in Japan, there are so many small farmers, but not like here, like here, Small farmers doing farmers market or you know local deliver CSA, but 
it's not popular in Japan yet. So it's very good to learn about new style farming for me. I really want to work on farm, especially small farm. I really want to do a farmer's market like here because it's not very popular in Japan yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be very popular. But we need somebody to uh, encourage the farmer's market. Here at the farm, we have a, a limited supply of milk, but we do have a little room for growth. And lately we have been growing, which has been a, a great thing for us. And we're able to have more help at the farm when we're able to, to grow. We've grown through our ice cream business. Now we're distributing it to Chattanooga and Knoxville. Also, we've been able to grow because of the whole local food movement, which has really helped us. A lot of people are looking for their local farmers, trying to figure out who's producing milk closest to us. And that has been a great thing for us because they've been able to reach out to us. Maybe they've never heard of Cruise Farm before, but I've gotten emails asking, where do you sell your products? And maybe we sell it just right around the corner from them and they've never gone to that little mom and pop store that carries our milk. So this has been a really great thing. Living a healthy lifestyle is not just about eating the right foods, but also about maintaining good fitness. The Live Green 5K in Cookville is an effort to promote green living to runners, joggers, and the whole family. WCTE's Desiree Duncan shows us how this first annual 5K is working to promote healthy living in all aspects of a person's life. Runner set! Basically, living green uh, health-wise, it is an overall health, both what you're putting in your body, eating well, um, and also recycling what we eat. If you use containers and products that can be recycled to obviously put them in a, a, a place that's good for our future generations. We all started talking, if you've been in a 5K race before or any type of running race, you get a race packet and they're usually plastic and we didn't want to go that route. We did a, a recyclable bag and then also with the water bottles, we did of course recyclable plastic and we made sure our cubed recycling was here so they could take the bins of recyclable uh, you know, bottles and any else, anything else we had with them back to their recycling facility to make sure they were recycled. So nothing here other than the banana peels and the orange peels, um, it's all going to go um, to recyclable waste. And so it's just overall health of running, uh, staying fit, getting your family involved. That's why we wanted to make it a family run. Um, so overall we're just excited about living green from start to finish in your life when you wake up in the morning with your health regime and also with what you're putting in your body and, and our waste and hopefully putting it in the proper place so there's no more waste for our future generations. I, I like being outside, it just helps me clear my head and take a little moment for myself with my three kids and so trying to get them to get more active and stay healthy. Actually I started running because I was chasing my wife. She's the, she started getting healthy and, and running and all of that and, and you know I decided that it was time for me to, to do it too and actually I found that I enjoy it. So um, I get, she's my motivation to do it. She was running, she's living a healthier lifestyle than you know, I have and so I'm just trying to, as you get older you know you want to, and plus we have three young children and you have children while you're young for a reason and you got to keep up with them. And so. And it's a good role model for them also. 
I wanted to get healthier. I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to be a couch potato, which I felt like I was getting to be. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I stayed healthy. And as I aged, I wanted to make sure that I, I uh, stay young by, uh, by getting healthy and getting, being active. Um, well, obviously it's important for heart health, for lung health, um, for your overall um, musculoskeletal um, health um, in order to, to uh, keep your bones strong uh, throughout your life. Um, running and good eating uh, is all important. Uh, Living Green, basically our race here, we did have the farmer's market on, on the race route as our first stop. So hopefully all our racers will go to the farmer's market afterwards and pretty much go spend their money there at local agriculture supporting that and Living Green, uh, eating healthy and living a healthy life as far as running. That's why the, the race and running and healthy just totally coincides with the Living Green. I uh, follow a gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free diet um, about 90% of the time and uh, I find that that helps me feel better. Fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, particularly um, if you can get something that you, where you, that you know where it came from, uh, is very important um, for, for your good health, if um, uh, organic is even better. Uh, hopefully they had a good night's sleep and also that they stretched. Um, some runners say stretching they don't need to do, but um, I like it in this nice hot weather. Make sure your muscles are nice and warmed up. They stretch and of course hydrated because it is so hot out even at 730 in the morning. Make sure you have a good couple glasses of water um, in you, even if you drank some coffee. Double that with another thing of water and then come out and just run your best race. And of course stay hydrated during the race, which we had two mile marker, uh, at mile marker one and two we had water stations so they could stay hydrated and at the finish line. Of course we had an ambulance on hand too in case anything happened. <laughs> get off the couch, get out there, you know. It's beautiful outside, you know, to run. Um, we run at the treadmill at the Y, um, but actually the, here lately we started running outside and it's a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. And I, you know, I haven't been running that long, but uh, uh, every time I do a 5K, it's a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I've really done something that's good for me. Join us next time when we go to the IAMS Nature Center in Knoxville, where they are dedicated to increasing knowledge of the natural world. Then we'll see how Volkswagen built their new Tennessee plant with an eye on being green. Lastly, we see Cummins Falls, the state's newest state park. All this on Live Green Tennessee, where we'll bring you more news about the farmers and businesses who are making the move to eating fresh and living green possible for us all. If you'd like more information about Live Green Tennessee, please visit our website at livegreentv.org where you'll find everything from healthy recipes to past episodes and much more. This program is brought to you in part by... Behind every Pick Tennessee Products logo is a Tennessee farmer who brings you fresh, local food grown with the kind of pride that gets handed down through generations. From now through fall, you can find Tennessee fruits and vegetables on farms and at farmer's markets near you. 
Find your Tennessee farmers at picktnproducts.org. What makes our state unique? Find out on the new Tennessee Channel, a statewide initiative by your public television stations. Each program is created in Tennessee, about Tennessee, and broadcast in Tennessee. The Tennessee Channel, Saturdays, 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 2 to 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on your public television station. Funding for this program was provided in part by the United States Department of Agriculture and by the generous support of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.